Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is when you're watching this. It's some good education news from the Utah Education Network. I'm Katie Blunt, Education Technology Trainer at UEN. In this show, we're sharing some good news about what's happening with education in Utah. Thousands of Utah teachers received gift cards from participating in our Reimagine Teaching program last year. Over 300 professional learning resources were created during the program to help you adapt your teaching during the pandemic. Go to emedia.uen.org to view webinars, lesson plans, and more from trusted partner organizations. Over the holiday season, district foundations and motivated educators lent a helping hand to their communities. Even though the Cash Education Foundation had to cancel their annual in-person Christmas Jubilee, their online event, Christmas for Classrooms, was a hit. They ended up raising $8,000 through this technology fundraiser. Davis Education Foundation, through several different holiday campaigns, was able to provide extra support for 3,000 students. Heather Tanana, JD, is an assistant professor at the University of Utah S.J. Quinney College of Law. This past winter, she led the College of Law holiday drive for the Utah Tribal Relief Foundation. The group ended up coordinating with Backcountry Santa volunteer pilots to take items down to Montezuma Creek and Navajo Mountain communities. They also worked with Skull Valley Band of Goshute, Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah, and Confederated Tribes of the Goshute Reservation to provide sub for Santa gifts and gift boxes for tribal elders. The Canyons Board of Education held their annual Apex Awards in December to honor the best of the best of their employees and community partners. Only this year, the traditional award ceremony went virtual. Awards were given in nine different categories, including Student Support Services Professional of the Year. The district's team of education technology specialists, Camille Cole, Justin Anderson, Katie Blunt, Scott Christensen, Scott Lambert, Michelle Shimon, Jonathan Stewart, and Jenna Townsend, and District Nurse Sally Goodger were named the 2020 winners in this category. What? My former ed tech team? Ah, <laughs> uh, shucks. I had no idea SGEN was highlighting us. But seriously, these dedicated professionals are awesome. And in a year of online learning and a global pandemic, they went above and beyond to support the district's employees, students, and families. Congratulations and thank you for the great work you do. The biggest and best news in Utah education right now is the vaccination of educators. On January 8th, Governor Cox announced that K-12 teachers and school staff were eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine beginning the week of January 11th. Check out these posts from educators showing their excitement. To learn more about the vaccination process and what it means for Utah educators, we have invited educational leaders from around the state to join us on SGEN, starting with the Canyons Apex Award winner herself, Sally Goodger. Well, hello, Sally. <laughs> First of all, I would like to congratulate you on being named Canyons District 2020 Student Support Professional of the Year. Thank you. It was a nice privilege. Well, very well deserved. 
<laughs> and of course, you must still be working as hard as ever now that the COVID-19 vaccinations are available to employees in your district. They are. We're in the throes of vaccinations. We also do rapid COVID testing uh, five days a week in our district. So we're very, very busy. Yes, sounds like it. Well, so what role do you and other school nurses play in the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines? So um, our HR department, Steve Diamond and Everett Perry, they kind of are the directors of the vaccination. So they help schedule the appointments and make sure that enough personnel is there to help. Our role as school nurses is we go and help monitor the staff members afterwards. Uh, we're there to answer any questions because people have lots of questions about it. Uh, we're there to monitor symptoms. If anyone should start having a reaction, uh, we're there to assist in any way possible. Uh, we're just more of a support for the vaccination. The community nursing service is providing the actual shots, their nurses. And then once they get through with the shot, they come into our area and they have to spend 15 minutes. If someone is having an adverse reaction, we ask them to stay 30 minutes. So we just monitor. And then we also field lots of calls from staff throughout the week wanting to know, should I go? Should I not go? You know, I'm experiencing this. So we kind of do follow up uh, answers if anyone has any problems after the shot. That is a very valuable and vital role that you're playing with that. Thank you. So how will these vaccinations improve things for Canyon's employees and students? Well, I had to have mine and it gave me a little bit of peace of mind. Once you get it, you kind of go, oh, I know I'm not 100% protected yet, but it kind of gave me a little bit of peace of mind. But I think we all need to remember that we still have to do our due diligence. We still do need to wear our mask. We still need to distance ourselves. We don't want to not be cautious or careful uh, because we don't really know a lot about the vaccine yet. We don't really know how long it's gonna last. Uh, so we still want to do our part, especially if you've only had one of your vaccinations. So uh, I just encourage everyone to yes, revel in the fact that you did get it, uh, but still do your due diligence because right now it's only for our staff uh, it's not for children yet. So our teachers and any other ancillary professionals might have had their vaccination, but our students have. So we need to be you know, cautious and careful. Wonderful. Those are great suggestions and great reminders for everyone as we go through this new process. Yes. Well, I have lots of people saying, yay, that means I don't have to wear my mask. And I go, no, sadly not. Uh, we still have to wear a mask for a while longer. Uh, but I will tell you, it gave me just some peace that I finally, we finally got to that point where I could get my vaccination. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Sally. We appreciate all you're doing to support educators in Utah. Oh, it's truly my pleasure. Thank you, Katie. Steve Diamond is the Director of Human Resources in the Canyon School District and has been playing an important role in the educator vaccination process as well. Hello, Steve. How are you doing, Katie? Doing well. Good to see you. <laughs> now, I've been told that you are the mastermind behind the COVID-19 vaccination process in Canyon School District. <laughs> uh I am in charge, been assigned uh, that it was our task in human resources. And so we've tried to mirror it pretty much basically as if you were going to Disneyland. So <laughs> for the check-in process, our goal is to make it a quick and efficient process. Uh, last night, we were able to facilitate 1,520 vaccinations in four hours and 20 minutes. Um, we were able to help people get through the lines. The average was between 30 and 35 minutes from check-in time until they finished their observations and exited the building. Well, Steve, that's shorter than a Disneyland line. That's pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> that's true. I've waited a few hours in several of those lines. <laughs> so what exactly is your role and the role of other district leaders in distributing these COVID-19 vaccines? So based upon the numbers that we get, the vaccinations that we receive, um, we go through using the structure that has been set up by Community Nursing Services and Salt Lake County Health. 
that we're distributing the vaccines from uh, from oldest to youngest so that we can uh, go through, uh, distribute equitably to our employees. Um, we also give employees an opportunity to defer, just like last night, um, individuals who may have come down sick, they weren't feeling well, or um, we had a couple grandbabies born yesterday. So we had about 130 who deferred and we'll put them back into the queue for a coming vaccination date. How will these vaccinations impact Canyon School District as a whole? You know, the gratitude of everybody last night was, you know, having the vaccine, I feel more comfortable in my classroom, driving the bus. Um, I'm hoping that it changes how people feel and that they can uh, come to work, feel more confident, uh, and be able to do their jobs and to try to get back to some normalcy. Having kids in the classroom, being able to have school like we've had it for years. Yeah, for sure. Um, what does the availability of vaccinations for K-12 staff say about Utah's priorities? You know, I greatly appreciate the governor and moving um, our teachers, our staff further up on the list. Uh, we greatly appreciate that and we will take every any dose that comes our direction and we will get it distributed. Uh, we worked hard last night to make certain that every single dose that was available was used and it was. Classroom teachers are feeling a great sense of relief about receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. Mary Jones from Bonneville Elementary in Ogden School District is here to share her thoughts with us. Hello, Mary. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So what does receiving the COVID-19 vaccination mean for you in your role in the classroom? It means um, I, I've only gotten one, so I haven't gotten the second one yet, but even so far, I feel much safer, I guess I should say, um, a little bit less stress, uh, like there's hope at the end of the tunnel, get that other shot and then I won't have to worry so much. Um, my kids are not quite as worried about me being uh, in the high risk area because of my nice white hair. <laughs> They're worried about their teacher getting sick and it's just good for all of us. Yeah, definitely. Well, how will receiving the vaccine help you be a better teacher and lift some of the burden you've experienced this school year? Well, uh, part of my day, I do a small ELL group, which has six kids at a horseshoe table surrounding me within two feet, all of them. And I'm a little bit paranoid with that. So I'm so glad to have this shot. I won't need to worry so much because kids come in from another class into my room and that that'll be a big relief can teach much more effectively, I think. Yes, definitely. When you're not worrying about everything else, you get to focus on being a teacher. <laughs> uh, well, is there anything else you want to share with us about your experience with your first dose of the vaccine? I will say in Ogden, where we went to the D event center, they were so efficient and effective. I could not believe it. I was very impressed. Got in, got out, and I feel much better about having it. So. For more information about the COVID-19 vaccine, please visit cdc.gov or coronavirus.utah.gov. Thank you to our guests for sharing their perspectives with us. We all hope that the start of this vaccination process is the beginning of the end of this long pandemic, <laughs> a light at the end of the tunnel. Of course, if the pandemic ends, does that mean that SGEN ends too? Guys, will I be out of an anchor job? Nah, there will always be some good education news in Utah. Here at Some Good Education News, we're not just sharing good news, we're sharing some good tech tips. Rob Bentley from UEN's professional development team is standing by to teach us how to remove that pesky background from an image you want to use in your digital presentations. Take it away, Rob. Do you ever find yourself wishing that the images that you use in PowerPoint or Google Slides didn't have backgrounds? 
If so, this tech tip will show you how to easily remove those backgrounds. The tool that I'm going to use to remove the backgrounds is called Remove BG, and you can find it at remove.bg. When you get there, there's no need to sign up for an account. All you have to do is click Upload Image. You'll get a pop-up that you can use to browse your computer to find the images that you would like to remove the backgrounds from. In my Downloads folder, I have some animal images that I would like to use. I'll just click to select the lion image and remove BG does a good job of taking out the background from that image. I could simply click to download the image at this point, but instead I'm going to click upload another image and I'm uploading the image of the elephant and the tiger, the dog and the cat. As you can see, remove BG does a better job with some images than others. Sometimes errors will appear, like in this example. Fortunately, you can click Edit, and there are some preset effects that you can choose from if you'd like. But more often than not, what you'll want to do is either erase or restore parts of the image. In this case, I want to erase this mistake here. I can set the brush size for erasing, and then just click to erase the mistakes. If you accidentally erase too much, you can click Restore, choose the brush size, and then click and drag to restore that part of the image. At this point, I'm happy with the image and should click Download, Download Image, and it puts a copy of the image on my computer, but this time without the background. I can X out of this image and then proceed to download the other images so that I can use them in my project. Back in PowerPoint, I'm going to delete the images that have the backgrounds and I'll insert the new images. Picture from file, I'll go to my downloads and select the new images. Without their backgrounds, my animal images look much better on the slides. Those same images also work well in Google Slides, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, and many other software programs. Thanks, Rob. Next up, our surprisingly familiar meteorologist will give us the current Utah weather forecast. Hi, I'm Michael Hakarainen at Solitude Ski Area, where the weather is pretty good. Let's go, okay? Thanks, Michael. I'm Katie Blunt, and that's our show. For more good news stories, follow the UEN Homeroom Podcast. And if you know of any stories that we can share, post them via social media using the hashtag UEN Good News or tag our social media profiles. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay kind, and keep learning.